Hello everybody, it's Amel, and today I'm going to teach you how to solve the happy number problem. Write an algorithm to determine if a number is happy. A happy number is a number defined by the following process. Starting with any positive integer, replace the number by the sum of the square of its digits, and repeat the process until the number equals 1, where it will stay, or it loops endlessly in a cycle which does not include 1. Those numbers for which this process ends in 1 are happy numbers. Example, the input is 19, so the method returns true, because 19 is a happy number. Explanation, well, you start with 19, and the first thing you do is that you square every digit in 19, and you add them up, so you get 82. Then you square every digit in 82, and add them up, you get 68. Then from 68, you square every digit, and you get 100, after you add them up. And from 100, you square every digit and add them up, and you get 1. So because it ends in 1, this is a happy number. So, as you can see, in this problem, we're dealing with a cycle. So one way to solve this problem, one way to solve the problem is to use a data structure like a set that allows you to find an element in constant time. You can check if the element is in the set in constant time. But there's a better way, so in this video I will show you both ways. One way using a set, and the other way is using the two-pointer technique. So without further ado, I'm going to show you how to solve this problem. First, I'm going to have a set of integer set. It's a value of new hash set. Then I will say while n is not equal to 1, because if the number, if n equals equals 1, then this is a happy number. When it, whenever it gets to 1, if it gets to 1. So first, I need to check if there's a cycle. So I will say if set that contains n, then I just return false. Because there is a cycle, and the cycle is not in 1. The cycle um, is in another number. Then every time I say set that add n because in future iterations I want to check if I have seen the number before to determine if there is a cycle so I have to add it to the set every time. Then I will just say n gets the value of find next of n. So find next is a method I'm going to write below and this will do this process here of, of finding the sum of the square of every digit in the number. So by the end I return true because if I was able to get out of the while loop, that means that n equals equals 1, so the number is happy because it was able to get to 1 after applying this process. So now I'm going to have private integer find next integer n. So I just need to find the sum of the square of every digit in the number, so I'm going to have a variable for the final result, gets the value of 0. At the end, I return the, the final result, and then I will say while n is greater than 0. And I have the condition n is greater than 0 because every time I will be uh, dividing n by 10, n divides equals 10, because I will be getting um, the digit, the rightmost digit every time. So I will say result plus equals n modulo 10 times n modulo 10. So what I'm doing here is that I'm getting the rightmost digit. For example, in 19, I get the 9 by saying n modulo 10, and then I multiply by 9 by n modulo 10. So I multiply 9 times 9, so that's equivalent to finding the, the square of this digit 9. I add it to the final result, to the sum, and then I say n divides equals 10, so I can actually, uh, the next iteration, I can get the next digit, which is a 1. So this will give me the, the sum of the square of every digit in the number n. So f using the set, I can detect a cycle, and if there's a cycle, and the cycle um, doesn't happen with this number 1, then I return false, but if eventually n becomes 1, I break out of the loop and I return true. So the number is a happy number. I'm going to run the code. It seems to be working fine. I'm going to submit a solution. 
All right, so this is working perfectly, but this is not the best solution because as you can see, we're using a set data structure. So the space complexity is not going to be big of one. Can we improve the solution to be big of one in space complexity? Yes, we can. So for that, we're going to use the two-pointer approach. So I'm gonna delete this solution here, but I will leave this method down below because I'm gonna need it here um, because this is just a helper method, so it's the same process. But then I'm gonna use the two-pointer approach. So this is similar to the linked list problem. Whenever you want to find a cycle in a linked list, so you have two pointers, slow and fast. Every time, every iteration, slow moves one step at a time and fast moves two steps at a time. So eventually, if there is a cycle, slow and fast are going to meet. Slow and fast are going to be equal. So in this case, we want to check that slow and fast, when they meet, there's a cycle and we want to check that they meet a number one. If they meet a number one, then this number is happy. And the space complexity would be big O of one. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you the solution. Integer slow gets a value of n, and fast gets a value of n. Then while true, I'm gonna say slow gets a value of find next of slow, fast gets a value of find next of fast, fast gets a value of find next of fast, and then if slow equals equals fast, I break, and by the end I just check, because here if slow equals equals fast, it means that there was a cycle, then by the end I just have to check if the cycle is at number one. So return slow equals equals one. So I'm gonna run the code, it seems to working fine. I'm gonna submit a solution. All right, so this is working perfectly. One millisecond faster than 95.06% of Java submissions for happy number. So as you can see, uh, this solution is more elegant and more efficient because it uses less space. It uses big of one space. Since we're only using constant um, extra memory, we're only using a few extra variables. So if you like this video, please press the like button don't forget to subscribe and see you next time.